One of the, the, the concepts that he would like to have on this is kind of a Zen drum type interface where you can you can tap on it and get sounds to, to play out by MIDI. But there's actually some uh, some cross coupling between these piezo speakers that I've been working on and I think I've come up with a solution. At first I'd like to put it on the oscilloscope and show what you know how these piezo speakers when you tap on one how it cross couples into the other and then I'll go into how how I'm going to fix that. I, I, I think the way I'm going to be fixing this will also give us some leeway to do some other uh, really fun effects. You should be able to see pulses. This is me tapping the, the piezo element and you can see a, a 10 volt, 10 to 15 volt pulse rising up. If you look at the, the line below, this line below is the the piezo transducer that I'm tapping not tapping on and it's picking up you can see that there's um, it's picking up uh, the the acoustics that are traveling through the wood and I can even tap out I'm tapping out on the wood like out by the neck and you can see it it causing effects so this is what I'm going to do to fix this cross coupling of these these transducers. Okay, so that's going to allow. Can you explain to them like what that's going to trigger and what what that what that is going to mean to the player? Yeah, if if I tap on this transducer and then one of the other transducer picks that up, it's going to cause a false trigger, which might cause a tone that you really don't want to to come out of your MIDI uh, box. So we really so, want to. those of you. Who if you don't know what we're talking about with the MIDI triggers, basically this, this guitar is going to have a bunch of dots all over the front of it. And when you hit those dots, it's going to fire off whatever our celebrity wants it to fire off as far as the sound. So you can hit it and it can fire off a, uh, a scream or a, uh, uh, or a drum or a, a, an air raid siren. Or it can change lighting. Uh, anything. This is how I'm going to fix the problem and give us added functionality. So uh -oh. Cypher's Semiconductor makes these capacitor sense proximity sensors for doing uh, sensing oh. of buttons. Like on the front of iPods, a lot of these iPods have a capacitive sensor, so you, there's no mechanical switch. It's actually just the capacitance of your finger. So what I'm going to do is, on top of the transducers, that will be picking up the analog how hard you're pushing onto the transducer. I'm going to have a capacitive um, sensor to tell when my finger is close to a pad. If it's not near another pad, then it will disregard any uh, spikes that it sees there. So that should give us a better noise floor to where we can control, we can, we can give him more range in that 0 to 255 MIDI range of how much pressure because we can eliminate the noise in the other transducers. Now here's the cool thing about these these Cypress parts. You can tune them on the fly so that they they not only become a, a contact sensor, they become a proximity sensor. So you can actually tune them to where you get your hands close to these things and it'll start triggering events. Oh. So we flip a switch and this becomes a a, a theremin Continuous type. controller you'd call it. Yeah. Oh. Now here's another neat feature of these um, cap sense devices. If you put sensors really close together then like so close together that your finger covers one or two of them you have a continuous slider bar that you can move back and forth your finger back and forth across and it gives you an analog value out.